focus on a well-known passage that shows us that Jesus is our saviour. And above all else, uh, we've gathered this morning to worship God, our Father, who sent Jesus, his son, to be our saviour. So as we begin, let's pause and pray. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our first song reminds us that we cannot rely on anything that we have done to make us right with God. So let's enjoy and join in with nothing but grace. Thanks, Nicola. Lovely 
lovely song to start our service with and to bring us into God's presence. We know that we have a responsibility to live in a way that recognises God's grace in our lives and to respond to that grace. And yet we also know that so often we fail to do that successfully. So we have some words of confession to say together. So if we go to those now, let's say together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Now, one of the best things about Zoom is that people can join us from all over the place. And this is how we're able to introduce today our new intern for next year at St Jude's. So we're really pleased to be joined today by Davita Froliak. And Davita is going to be starting with us in September. So welcome, Davita. And tell us something about your family and where you're from. Okay, hello everyone. It's great to be here this morning. Um, so I currently live in Brussels, Belgium uh, with my parents and my family, um, but we're Dutch by nationality. Um, I have a twin sister and a little brother and a little sister. Um, and yeah. Great, that's super, thank you. So you're coming from Belgium to England, so we're gonna have to work out some quarantine um, practicalities uh, when you come over to Vita, but I'm sure those will get sorted out and it's so good that you're uh, going to be coming. So um, why were you interested in being an intern at St Jude's? Um, so I was coming to the end of my marketing course um, here in Brussels and I was starting to think about, um, I was starting to think and pray about what would be next. Um, and I um, asked uh, one of our associate pastors at our church, uh, Fiona Simon, uh, to pray with me about it uh, several times. <laughs> and she told me about the discipleship here and she told me about Neil and Debbie. And she put us in contact and I was actually able to meet uh, Neil and Debbie when they were in Brussels right before lockdown. <laughs> um, and just the whole evening when they were telling me about St. Jude's and about the people at St. Jude's um, and what you guys do, um, I just felt so excited and I went home that evening and I looked up even more online and it was the first time I genuinely felt excited about something for next year and just I just as the process has been going on I felt so, so much peace um, about everything even when Covid started getting quite bad in Belgium and borders started getting closed I just still felt at peace um, and I just feel really excited about next year and joining St Jude's. Great. And uh, there was another applicant, so Davita had to go through quite a tough interview, but you survived yeah. that, didn't you, Davita? Just about. Um, just about. Just about <laughs> Sam and Dom and Sanam and myself. So uh, Davita uh, was the person that we chose to take this post. So uh, what are you looking forward to most about the year ahead, coming and being at St Jude's? That is a really hard question because I don't feel like there's one thing um, that I'm really excited about. It's a combination of several things. I'm really excited uh, to become part of St. Jude's community um, and the church life and the church family and just meet everybody there, hopefully in person, but we'll see how things go. Um, I'm really excited to, to meet the children and the youth. I'm excited to get to know them and for them to get to know me. And I'm just really excited to see uh, what, what God is gonna do this year uh, personally but also uh, for St. Jude's. Um, I'm just really excited to be able to grow in my faith um, and in my walk with the Lord um, and to do that alongside everybody else at St. Jude's. Brilliant, thank you, Davita. It's so good to see you and uh, we're so looking forward to having you with us. So Davita's gonna be joining us uh, in September and there's a discipleship year that is run by New Wine and that's a training day each week that Davita will be 
uh, going off to train on to train in leadership and develop her gifts and talents and she'll be splitting her time between the children and youth working with Dom and also the communications which has grown so much during lockdown so Davita's going to help Sam with some of the practicalities of working with the uh, communications and making sure those all go online at the right time and things get out properly so we're really looking forward to having Davita here to help us and looking forward to all that God's going to lead her into in this year uh, that she's with us. Now we have some more news about someone who will be joining us so we've got a special update from Joss. Hey thanks Neil, good morning everybody. Uh, it really is a joy and delight to tell you that our next speaker will be the Reverend Adam Tams. Adam's currently a curate, there he is, uh, at St Paul's Church, Leamington Spa. And he's married to Jess, and you'll see Adam is holding their little boy, that's Jacob. He will be four this December, and Jess has got their little girl, Ellie. She is just over one year old, and a very important member of their family is not in the photograph, that's Sammy, their Springer Poodle Cross. Uh, so they will be coming, God willing, uh, as soon as we can get them and the good Lord can get them there. Adam, previous, uh, he's done a few things, but one of the more significant, he was the operations manager at Christ Church Clifton in Bristol, which is quite a big church there. Uh, he read his theological degree at Trinity College, Bristol. And he is a lovely, lovely guy. And uh, Neil and I hope uh, he'll be joining us in Zoom in the not too distant future to say hello for himself. He's announcing in his own church this morning that he will be moving to St. Jude's. Just one thing for prayer. We're having a little bit of a challenge with housing for him. And until that clarifies in the next couple of weeks, uh, we won't know exactly when he's coming. Uh, we're working with the diocese to try and make sure he has somewhere with his family to live, because at the minute, the vicarage is let out. So please do pray for that. Pray for God's solution. Thanks very much. Thank you, Joss. And uh, I think it is a really exciting appointment for St. Jude's. And uh, I'm sure that God has been in it all of this process that we've gone through. All of that prayer, all of that preparation uh, has has been uh, finally fulfilled in uh, Adam and Jess and Jacob and Ellie coming to join us. So um, really looking forward to them being with us and all that they're going to bring to the life of St. Jude's. So we're going to move now into our time of looking at the, the word of God. And uh, we've got Adam who's going to preach to us. Uh, before we hear that passage, uh, let me just pray as we get ready to, uh, to hear what God has to say to us this morning. So um, let me pray. Lord, you are the one who calls us out upon the waters to step out of the boat and to try new things in new places. This has always been the way that you work. We do pray this morning for Davita, for Adam, Jess, Jacob and Ellie. Be with them, Lord, as they leave their comfort zones to start a new chapter of their lives here at St Jude's. And we thank you for your word to us this morning. May we hear all that you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. So now Delia is going to bring us our reading. Good morning. The Bible reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. 
but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth night of the a fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then, then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Delia. And now the sermon from Adam. What do you make of that story? Is it just that, a story, a tall tale, proof that the Bible just isn't plausible anymore in educated 21st century society? In all seriousness, how do you handle texts like this with your mates and your family who attempt to ridicule your faith in Jesus? Come off it, they'll say. You don't literally believe that Jesus walked on water, do you? Oh, you do? Tell me again, how many people was it that Jesus fed? You can feel the heart palpitation starting and the redness coming up from your chest to your cheeks as you feel embarrassed. Well, I think there's a couple of options at that point. You can duck for cover and say something like, well, I'm a small C Christian. I follow Jesus, but the place of miracles, no, probably they didn't happen. They're just tall tales. You're right. I should sweep them under the carpet. That's the realm of fantasy. Now, or you could indeed make your stand for these miracles and you could try and defend them. Let me try and give you some ammunition to help you in doing that. But I thought this week I would test to see whether I could indeed recreate this miracle. So on Tuesday, I filled up our slow cooker with water, the ceramic part in the middle, and I took it into the garden where Joel was playing. And I called Joel over and I said, Joel, I'm giving a talk on Sunday about Jesus walking on water. I want you to try and walk on water for me. And so he obliged. I asked him to take off his shoes and socks. I mean, after all, he's only four. He went along with it. And I put the slow cooker on the floor uh, outside the kitchen window and he stepped into it with his right foot. And you'll never guess what happened. His foot sunk straight through the water. So I said to Joel, step on it with your left foot, try and push yourself up and out of the water. And he tried. And I said to Joel, why? Why can't you walk on water? And Joel said to me, because I'm not a superhero. And that's right, isn't it? Joel, just like you and just like me, we are not superheroes. We're not the hero of the story. When you zoom off this morning or when your video feed on Facebook ends, here's the big point. Jesus is the saviour. Jesus is the hero of the story. Now, if you're still sceptical about miracles, and no doubt some of you are, then just think about this. If God was to come to the earth, uh, in the person of Jesus, because that's what Christians believe, that, that Jesus is God in the flesh. And if God came to the earth, then you'd expect him to be able to do some pretty superhero-like stuff, like feeding 5,000 people with a little boy's packed lunch, or being able to take a stroll on the top of, a, of the waters of a stormy sea. So let's just have a quick look at the context here. Why are these two miracles here? Why does Matthew place these two miracles side by side at this point in Matthew's gospel. 
Are they here to show us Jesus' identity? Well, yeah, they are. The feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus walking on water show us that Jesus has superhuman abilities. These miracles point to Jesus' identity, don't they? There's that conclusion that the disciples reach in verse 32. Truly, you are the Son of God. But for the keen reader amongst us, we'll know in Matthew that that point has already been cashed out already. We've encountered Jesus' identity. Jesus has healed the sick, cast out demons. He's already calmed a storm. He's brought a dead girl back to life. And he's healed a paralysed man and then claimed that he can forgive sins. So I ask, why does Matthew place these two miracles here side by side? Is there something else for us to learn from them? Well, I think there is. Notice that these two miracles come after Jesus' neighbours and his neighbourhood have failed to recognise who he is. We see that at the end of chapter 13. Notice also that this section comes after Herod's beheading of John the Baptist, the beginning of chapter 14. So Jesus has burst onto the scene. He's claimed to be the prophet of God. Jesus followed John the Baptist. John the Baptist said that Jesus was the prophet of God, who's come to bring salvation to the people. And with that in mind, for Jesus then, in that context, to feed 5,000 people and walk on water is hugely significant. And here's why. In the Bible, when God's rescue plan is revealed, it's revealed with particular miracles. Particular miracles that show God's saving power. Could it be that these particular miracles recorded here, performed by Jesus, show more than look at Jesus and how powerful and authoritative he is over creation, but look at Jesus and see that he's the promised Messiah. He's the saviour and he's the saviour of the world. John the Baptist pointed to him, but now Jesus is here. He's come to reveal God's rescue plan and bring his people safely into the new creation. And so to authenticate himself, Jesus feeds miraculously and crosses over the water. And I think that's supposed to remind us of something. And that's supposed to remind us of the Exodus. God's rescue for his people was revealed to Moses. And then the rescue miracles that accompany it almost mirror these. Do we see? Do you remember when God's people were rescued from wicked Pharaoh by Moses through God? Two particular miracles followed. One, they're delivered through the sea. There's a way through the sea. And then after that, they're fed miraculously with manna in the desert. What do these miracles show? They're an echo back to the Exodus, back to God's salvation. They say, look at Jesus and see that he is the Lord. He's the saviour. And his miracles point to the kingdom of God, the new creation to come. See, don't we see that Jesus is the one who can create out of nothing. He, he can provide miraculously with bread and fish. He's a new and greater Moses who leads his people through the waters of God's judgment and into the new land, a land free from oppression and slavery. Do you see? In Isaiah chapter 43, Isaiah has been speaking about the new creation coming. And he says, thus says the Lord. He who made a way through the sea, a path through mighty waters, see, I'm doing a new thing. The psalmist in Psalm 77 says, your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, you led your people like a flock. God's rescue plan is being revealed through Jesus. And these two miracles echo back to the Exodus to authenticate that Jesus is the saviour. God's plan is seen and God's rescue power is felt through the crossing over of the water and through being fed miraculously. These two miracles say loud and clear, salvation is found in Jesus. He's God's son. He is the promised Messiah. He is the greater and new Moses. And to fulfill that great and glorious promise that God will gather his people 
and lead them. And Jesus is the one who's going to lead us out of this broken and battered and wrecked world as it is, wrecked by dictators and disease and disaster and death and sin and Satan and suffering. And Jesus come to rescue us out of that into his kingdom. Crossing over the waters and miraculous feeding is evidence of this great plan of rescue from God. So if that's what's going on, then perhaps that shines some light into this text. Well, it's getting late, the people have been fed, they've been sent off, and the disciples have been sent off by Jesus as well. They're crossing the Sea of Galilee, and camera one, let's have camera one, on the boat uh, that the disciples are in. And as, as we pan to camera two, we see Jesus alone up on a mountainside in prayer, verse 23. We go back to camera one on the boat, and it's now a considerable distance from the land. Uh, in John's account, he records that they're about three to four miles out. And the boat is being beaten by the waves, and the wind is pushing them back. They're getting nowhere fast without Jesus. It's somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. The disciples are, have been in the boat all that time, on the water, battling the storm. Maybe six, even up to ten hours, they've been on the boat. And then Jesus starts to cross the sea, verse 25. Camera comes back to the disciples on the boat and they see Jesus and as soon as they see him they freak out. They think he's a ghost and Jesus comforts them and says take courage, don't be afraid. Why? Jesus says it is I or I am. Yahweh, the promise making God, is showing that Jesus is the way of salvation. He's revealed himself as God. And he's God who's come, and he's come to rescue. Your creator, your provider, your healer, your rescuer, your saviour is right here with you, in the storm and through the storm. And he's here to lead you to safety. And I think Peter sees something of this in Jesus. He catches a glimpse of this in Jesus, albeit briefly and for a moment. He says in verse 28, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus says. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. Isn't that incredible? None of the other disciples got out of the boat. Only Peter did. But the moment that Peter takes his eyes off Jesus, verse 30, well, his feet begin to sink. Immediately he cries out then to be saved. Lord, save me. And Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Spectacular miracles pointing back to authenticate who Jesus really is, that he's the saviour of the world. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 puts it like this, salvation is found in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. What an incredible insight Peter had. What courage he showed to step out of the boat and to step onto the waters, something that none of the others did. Well, what's the lesson here? Well, if you place your confidence in Jesus as saviour, then you can be completely sure that he will bring you safely into the new creation. Regardless of what's going on all around us, in the storms of our life and in the storms of the world, if our confidence is in Jesus, he will bring us to safety. I wonder how is the Lord calling you to respond to him today? Some of us have been drifting and we've been drifting our way through lockdown. And lockdown has shown us just how much we've drifted away from him. Jesus says, come, come back to him. Maybe you're afraid, afraid of what people might think of you. If you take a step towards Jesus, I'll be reminded by what's said here. Jesus says, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Some of you might say you are a small C Christian. Maybe you've been a church goer for such a long time that you've overlooked Jesus' ministry and miraculous power. Can you hear the challenge of Jesus? He's saying, get out of the boat. 
and get your feet wet today. Take a step of faith towards Jesus. Repent of those wrong ideas about who Jesus is and worship him. Literally, fall on our knees and kiss the ground beneath his feet. Well, I wonder, as we see him more clearly as the saviour of the world, can we see something else of his plan afresh for our lives today? Well, let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you sent Jesus to rescue us, to show us a new way to live with Jesus as our Lord and our King. We thank you that Jesus stepped out into that storm for us. Thank you that he faced what we couldn't. Thank you that through Jesus, his life and death, resurrection and ascension, the way into relationship with you is open. Lord, catch our hands and capture our hearts and lead us into your new creation. We ask this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen. Adam, really encouraging words and a reminder not to just drift through lockdown um, and it's uh, it's not a time uh, this month perhaps for, for starting lots of new things but we can still focus on Jesus, keep our eyes fixed on him because he is the author and perfecter of our faith and it might be that you find a book to read or uh, you might start a new uh, relationship uh, with somebody who you can just encourage or support in their walk with God but let's remember that Jesus is our saviour and we can have confidence that he will catch us and call us and uh, capture our hearts as Adam said so let's let's take that message with us into this next week and now it's time for our prayers and we're going to go to Arlene for those. Mm -hmm. The response today is, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, is hear our prayer. Help us to get out of the boat and walk in faith with you, Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. Father, you know both our gifts as a congregation and the needs of those in this parish. And we ask you to bless our ministry in all areas and through all platforms. Strengthen and encourage all church leaders, including Neil, Adam, John, Nigel, Colin, and we give thanks for our recently appointed vicar, Adam. May he feel God's guidance, and we pray for a successful and smooth transition as Adam, Jess, and the family move to Southgate. We continue to pray for our queen and the royal family that they would continue to serve in their duties and retain good health. Father God, heal our nation and all nations of what is in the past and still corrodes the present, especially with keeping everyone safe from this virulent COVID-19 virus. Guide us all to work together to remain safe and secure. Father God, we ask you to be with all those who have died or have been injured in Beirut and for those whose lives have been traumatized by the explosions and the destruction. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father God, we pray for St. Jude's Church Nursery. We pray for the well being of the staff during the summer break, the safety for the staff currently working and for all the vulnerable children and families. Father God, we also pray for continued interest in nursery places for September. We pray for the vacancy of a nursery practitioner, that this position would be filled with a suitable candidate. And may the nursery return to a safe and normal practice in September. Lord, in your mercy, hear Dear our Lord. prayer. Our mission prayers today focus on the Bible Society. Father God, we pray for the Bible Society's work in the Gulf countries, the United Arab Emirates, 
Kuwait, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Oman, and Yemen. We pray for their ministry among migrant workers and their mission to publish and distribute the Bible in 60 different languages. We pray for the Bible Society staff as they aim to share encouragement, motivation, support, and God's peace at this time of uncertainty, anxiety, fear, and sadness. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord, our prayer. prayer. We call to mind, Healing Father, all who are unwell in body, mind, or spirit, those of our church family, and those known personally to us. We pray for healing and hope. We also pray for the bereaved family and friends of those who have recently died and pray that they may rest in your peace forever. And now we say together the prayer that our Savior Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thank you, God, that when we fix our eyes on Jesus, our lives will reflect his nature. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks, Anna. And our hearts do go out to those people affected in Lebanon, in Beirut, um, it just shows, doesn't it, how precious life is and how fragile it can be and how great there is a need for a good leadership in all nations. It seems that there were mistakes made and there should never have been that amount of um, what was in effect explosive sat on that port for so long. It's just uh, incredible really that such a disaster should happen and uh, and it's really down to uh, the human failings of those involved. So uh, some information for us, um, our, communi our communion services are continuing at nine o'clock each uh, Sunday and everybody's welcome to come along and join those. Uh, if you do want to come and experience that, they're held in the chancel and you need to bring a mask. Uh, pretty much all our uh, meetings and gatherings in the church building, which is a public building, uh, we need to wear a mask for, uh, for the foreseeable future. The good news this week is that those who are leading the service, as long as they're socially distanced, don't need to wear a mask anymore. And those who are doing the reading, so that's gonna be helpful as we think about getting back to church in September. Thank you to all those who've generously given to uh, fund the restoration of the emblems that are up on the walls at St Jude's in the nave. Uh, we've got enough funds now to, to make that work happen. So uh, any further donations will be put towards the general decoration of St Jude's, but that uh, fund is gonna close uh, now. And we're just so grateful for all those who've contributed. And then, uh, we've now got our new summer and youth and children's programme that Dom has put together, a collection of activities for our youth and children over the next two weeks. These include a seafront stroll, mini messy church and rounders on the common. Some events are happening uh, twice for different age groups. So this week there's going to be a seafront stroll for the young people aged 12 to 18 and uh, and that's going to be happening on Thursday the 13th at 2 and going on till 4 so the young people will be meeting outside the pyramids and then walking up the promenade towards the coffee cup so there's a chance to play on the beach afterwards and stop for an ice cream on the way back and 
If you want any more details about any of those events for the young people and the children, email dom on dom.debu at sjs.church or uh, find out more details on Church Suite if you can connect there. So lots of really good news this week, lots to take in and lots to pray for. We will adapt to new ways of doing things. Uh, you know, the human race has survived because it is an adaptable uh, uh, race. And, uh, you know, we're going to move forward because God is with us. He always will be. And he always is going to be there for us. So let's enjoy our last song of worship before we break out into our small groups after the service. So our last song is Cornerstone. Let's enjoy and join in with this.
Great. So as we go into our groups, perhaps uh, uh, something to share, something to talk over in the small groups might be, uh, how has Jesus held you through lockdown? How has he helped in these days of storms and waves? How has he been with you uh, in these last months? And perhaps something to think about if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube later. Let's give thanks for all that Jesus is in our lives and share those stories with one another. Do remember to pray for Devita and for Adam, Jess, Jacob and Ellie as they prepare to come and be with us. And a final prayer of blessing for us all, the prayer that comes at the end of the letter of St Jude. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious present without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Abide in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.